All right, good morning. Welcome to Ratios Part 2. Today we're going to be looking at ratios and we're going to compare them to some data in a data table. All right, don't let it scare you. It's not that bad. We're just going to compare different things in different tables and we're going to see what we come out on. Right now you should be in your Glencoe, page 21, if you're just joining us. Page 21 in your Glencoe book. If you don't have your book, get out a loose leaf piece of paper and make sure you write it down. Write down these notes, okay? All right, our objectives today, we are going to compare ratios in a data table. And the first thing that we have today is a bar. Um, we're going to look at bar diagrams and frequency tables to see how we represent data. And the first example is several students named their favorite flavor of gum. Write the ratio that compares the number who chose fruit to the total number of students. Now here's where it gets tricky. When we talk about the total number of students, we have to talk about even those that like a certain flavor. So if we want to talk about the number who chose fruit, chose fruit over the total, then we have to look at fruit, which is here, so your top number is going to be three. That we've got established. Number of fruit, because it's listed first, it's got to go first, to the total. Now, total includes those that like fruit gum. So we have to play, take nine plus eight, which is what? 17 plus three, 20 plus one, 21. Whenever you compare to a total, you include the, whatever they asked. So if they said the number of students that like cinnamon gum to the total, it would still be eight over 21. The number of students that like peppermint gum to the total is nine over 21. The whole, the person that even likes that gum is included in that total, all right? So out of 21 kids, three of them like fruit flavored gum. Then we simplify. Again, I always ask myself, can this three go into that? Can that three go into 21? Take a minute, look at your multiplication chart. If the answer is yes, then that's the number you always wanna use because that's gonna take you down to simplest form in one simple step. Otherwise, if you, don't, if you can't figure that out, you can try and reduce by any number and you just may have to reduce again, okay? And it's fine if that works for you. This one though, we can just reduce by three. So we're gonna divide by three on the top and bottom. And if I have three, how many threes can I give away? I can only give one. If I have three, I'm sorry, if I have 21, how many threes can I give away with 21? If you said seven, you are correct. So our total ratio of students who chose fruit gum to the total number of students is one out of seven. You can write that three ways, and they gave that to you right down here, one seventh, one two seven or one colon seven. All right. Make sure you have this written down. I'm going to be moving on to the next page. Biggest thing again with relating parts to the whole is remember to include that part in your whole. All right. Okay. I gotta go to the next page because I couldn't fit it all on here where you could see it. There we go. We are, wait a minute. Yes, we are. Okay. We are on number three on yogurt sales. So now they gave us a bunch of blanks we have to fill in. Monday's yogurt sales are recorded in the table. Write the ratio that compares the sales of strawberry yogurt. And I underline that so that I remember that that has to be listed first to the total sales. So strawberry to total. Let's first figure out how many strawberry we have. Let's look at our data table. How many strawberry do we have? That's right, we have eight. All right, now we gotta figure out the total. Now remember, that eight has to be included in our total. So I'm gonna take that eight so I don't forget him. He's going in first. Plus seven from the vanilla, plus six blueberry, and three peach. Okay, we can add these in any order you want. I'm big on finding tens. You add it however you want to. For me, 
I know that seven and three is 10, and that just makes it easier for me to add because then I can go 10 plus eight is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so we have 24 total students that were tested in this um, yogurt sales. And we found that out of 24, 24 total sold, that eight of them, eight of them liked strawberry. All right. Now we gotta figure out what we're going to divide down to. And again, think about that top number. Can that top number go into the bottom number? It's not always gonna work, but if it does, it's a super good shortcut. In this case, eight does go into 24. So I'm gonna divide by eight. What we do on the bottom, we gotta do on the top. That's always the rule. Bottom and top have to be the same. Eight goes into eight once. How many times does eight go into 24? If I have 24, how many eights can I give away? Three. So my ratio is one to three. One to three. All right, so blank out of every blank yogurt cups sold were strawberry. So one, one, out of every three yogurt cups sold were strawberry. So that can help you figure out what you need for sales, all right? If you know you sell that many strawberry, you may need to purchase more strawberry than maybe another, maybe peach. Maybe you don't need to get as many peach. That's how companies make their money. They figure out exactly how many of each thing that they're selling so they can restock and have that stuff there for you. If you went to McDonald's and you didn't get fries because they didn't order enough, You'd be pretty upset, right? So companies really have to use ratios a lot to figure out exactly how much they're making in sales on what products. Then they know how to order how much they need and not to have too little or too much because if they buy food and it goes bad before they cook it and like too many buns for their burgers or things like that, well, then the company loses money. All right, I would like you to try this bottom one on your own. I want you to give yourself a pause for a minute Pause the video, try this one out, and see how you do. I'm gonna go over the answer in five, four, three, two, one. All right, a pet store sold animals less than the table in one week. Write the ratio of cats, of cats to pets. There's our ratio. Sold that week and explain the meaning. All right, how many cats do we have? Uh, we have, I'm going to write over here so we got a little more room. We have eight cats, and what is our total of pets? Well, if you added these up, 10 plus 14 is 10, 24, and 24 and 8 is 32. So eight out of 32 pets sold were cats. So now, are we done here? Is that as, as low as we can make that ratio? Because remember, we always want to simplify when we can. Can that top number go into that bottom number? It can. So we are going to divide it down by eight because that's the simplest way to get down to one. Eight divided by eight is one. Anything divided by itself is always one. 32 divided by eight is four. So our ratio of cats to pets for every one cat sold, four other pets were sold. All right, every one cat, you could have written it one, one to four, or one to four. Any of those answers is acceptable, all right? But for every one cat sold, four other pets were sold. All right, we are going to be moving on to the guided practice.